This is the 80s show on iHeartRadio. Good morning. I want to start this Tuesday morning with a conjectural moral question. Actually, I don't know. A, a conjectural moral question would imply uh, I'm asking something about your personal moral fiber. I, I think I'm just asking something about morals in general. How were your parents? Were they all right? Were they uh, attentive? Did they give you the tools you needed to make your way in the world? I mean, obviously, no parents are perfect. But um, uh, there's definitely times where you see folks that shouldn't be reproducing, are not providing a great life for their kids, are not in any way, shape, or form necessarily the people that you would go, hmm, yeah, Uh, they seem like they should be bringing a new life into the world. And it's an age-old debate, really. You're not ready to have a kid. Well, nothing's going to make you get your hustle on like having a kid. Do you wait until you're a fully formed, responsible, fiscally stable adult to reproduce? Or do you have a kid and that lights a fire under your butt and you grow into the person that you need to become to be a parent? I think either one of those is a great option. And either one of those works. But sadly... It's not necessarily always the case that people do rise to the occasion of being a parent. There's a lot of people out there with kids that have no business having kids. There's a lot of kids out there with parents that are absent, don't care, aren't involved, and in worst cases are abusive, and in worst cases do genuine harm to their children. And I've trotted this idea out on the show numerous times. Inspired by the movie Parenthood, which I saw when I was a kid. And I remember that famous Keanu Reeves line in it, where he said, you know, you need a license to hunt and fish and even have a dog, but they'll let anybody have a kid. I paraphrase. But, you know, it does throw into question the idea of reproductive rights. And it threw into question the idea of reproductive rights in my young mind years and years ago. And I kind of believe that. I mean, uh, look, obviously, this is where the conjectural moral part comes in. Obviously, it's an incredibly difficult line to draw where you say, hey, you deserve to have a kid and you don't. Not only is it difficult, it's probably impossible, which is why we haven't necessarily uh, sort of clamped down on reproductive rights. But I, for one don't have the answer. I I don't know how this should go. But I do kind of favor... (laughs) I don't want to use the word eugenics, because that's a little Hitler-y. But I do favor, I don't know, having to jump through some hoops before you're allowed to reproduce. And sadly, um, there are surgical things that must be done to stop you from being able to reproduce. So, you know, you can't force people to have surgery. And this is where it gets sticky and this is where it doesn't work out. And this is where thousands and thousands of children are born into the world that shouldn't be born into the world. To people that can't take care of them, don't want to take care of them, and in worst cases, abuse them. But uh, I would say this makes an extraordinarily strong case for castration. A Denver family had no idea that the footage captured by the secret camera they set up to document their brain-injured daughter's progress would one day be used as evidence in a disturbing sex crime case. Cops arrested 34-year-old Paul Bugarsik, I think is how his name is pronounced. You might as well just call him scum for allegedly sexually assaulting Julie Henson, who suffered a serious brain injury back in 2011. The suspect reportedly pled guilty to sexual assault and kidnapping charges, was sentenced to 15 years in prison earlier this month. He's also going to undergo five years of sex offender probation following his prison term. See, after the Henson family reviewed hours of the recorded footage they were using to document their child's progress, they found several instances of sexual assault committed on their brain-damaged child. The family was, of course, devastated. They knew and trusted this guy. He was a nursing assistant at Cherry Hills Health Care Center. Their daughter fell 
hit her head after a coworker pulled a chair out from underneath her at work in 2011. It's all fun and games till someone gets hurt. She later experienced painful headaches, led to brain swelling, and a cyst being found on her brain. Her situation deteriorated to the point where she can no longer walk, talk, or communicate with others as well. She's trapped in her body. She couldn't even fight back. She couldn't say anything. But she knew what was going on. The family also said the abuse Julie suffered has set her progress back roughly a year. So, when it comes to reproductive rights and uh, people being allowed to operate with whatever they got going on between their legs with impunity, I would hold this up as a case for chemical castration. This, this should fall into first degree sexual assault sentencing guidelines. You want repeat sex offenders to virtually disappear from our legal system? Go all ISIS on their peepees. Now, some might argue that castration similar to Sharia law, but they're wrong. Sharia law, they, they punish the rape victim. This is just a heavy dose of permanently induced common sense for the offender. Harder to rape when you have your twig and berries taken away. It is. Hey, that was an interestingly dark way to start the show. We'll try and find a little light on this Tuesday shortly. What if we make fun of celebrities? Yeah, that that sounds like a good move. Thank you so much for hanging. Joining the conversation at ADSXE at Funk FM. like what you're hearing, tweet the show at ADSXE. AD on iHeartRadio. So you remember, uh, you remember that atheist Air Force sergeant who wasn't going to be allowed to be in the Air Force because he had to take an oath to re-enlist, and the oath included the words, so help me God, and he was like, that's not cool, we're not supposed to be, uh, yeah, no, I'm supposed to be allowed to be an atheist, that's sort of one of the, that's one of the tent poles on which America was founded. Uh, I got an update for you on that particular situation. Also, uh, they found the three missing Afghan soldiers. Where did they find them? Where were they headed? Where were they sneaking to after uh, leaving a trainer a training exercise at a Cape Cod military base? Uh, oh, I'm altogether unsurprised by the situation, but we'll get into that later along with uh, the woman who got surgery to add a third breast so men won't want to date her anymore. Yeah, that's a thing. It's happening. Right now, though, let's take a look at the events of today in our segment, My Witness News in no way, shape, or form fair. Certainly not ba- balanced. Funkhauser A, how are you, B? What's going on in the world? Uh, Good. Soldiering through on a Tuesday. Uh, yeah. What day is it? Where am I? Don't What's you have to like on? work all weekend long? Let, let's peel back the radio curtains for a second and uh, offer <laughs> offer a glimpse into Funkhauser's world. You think all he does is super awesome, fun, and amusing radio with yours truly, but this is the tip of the iceberg when it comes to Funkhauser's responsibilities. I'm just one cog in his particular machine. Uh, what are you uh, What are you doing this weekend? That's gonna well, give you effectively no weekend. As super producer to the stars is what I am. Uh, in Atlanta this weekend, there's something going on called Tomorrow World, and it's basically for like uh, three days straight. It's a like a live event we're doing for iHeartRadio's Evolution channel. So if you uh-huh. tune into Evolution Friday uh-huh. through Sunday from uh, all day to all day, you'll hear. So that's what you I'll be doing my- this weekend. You know, my favorite interpretation of EDM music is, mm. is, uh, and like the whole EDM craze that's going on in America right now is to me kind of laughable. Uh, like, I don't think we even call it EDM in other parts of the world, but they're like, hmm, yes, I'm an EDM fan, electronic dance music. It, it's like, it's this new thing. Anybody that grew up in London in the 90s listening to sort of like, 
I don't know, when Skrillex came out, people were like, oh, that's amazing. I was like, or, or, that's exactly like Daft Punk in 1997. That's exactly like most of what was coming out of Croydon in the mid-90s. That's exactly like the Prodigy and Square Pusher. You're just, mm, 15 years late to the party. And people are so enamored of it. It's a weird thing how it took America so long to catch up to what was going on in the world. But there you go. Make of that what you will. But you know what my... You know, you know what my favorite interpretation of dance music is? Have you? Oh, I don't even know what the hell the company is. It Geico that has the talking pig? The oh, yeah. wee. That, it, it's Geico, right? Yeah, yeah. Geico has so many. I like if I could have a, a job that wasn't doing what I'm doing now, it would probably be like writing commercials for a company like Geico that already have like the talking gecko, the caveman, and they're like, we need something else. What about a talking pig? Sure, yeah, that sounds great. Like just being able to do bong rips and write commercials for Geico, that sounds like a pretty good way to go. But like for some reason, my favorite interpretation of dance music now comes from those commercials. Have you seen it where he's on vacation and he's going to pay his bill? Yeah, yeah. And he Boots uses... Captain. Yeah, yeah. And he's just like, oh, looks like I'm all paid up. And he puts his headphones back on. He's like, boots and pants and boots and pants and boots and pants. I don't know why, but that tickles me. It does. It makes me laugh. Laugh, I nearly defecated. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, go on. Can I read news boots and now? Pants and boots and pants and boots and pants. <laughs> Yes, read the news now. Okay. Kate Hudson says she and her mom, Goldie Hawn, can communicate with the dead. Uh, well, if that's the case, if Kate Hudson and her mom, Goldie Hawn, can communicate with the dead, I, I would imagine that um, they'll be able to have full conversations with their careers. Huh? See what I did there? It's funny because they haven't made movies in years that anybody cared about. What else? Madonna's adopted son, David, will be dancing on her upcoming tour. She says she'll treat him no differently than all her other young male dancers. <laughs> it's going to be really awkward during the sex. <laughs> gross! <laughs> yeah, well... I know, bet I know the soundtrack to that sex, though. <laughs> boots and pants and boots and pants and mom, that's weird, and boots and pants. <laughs> Anyways, go on. More details about the Mama June and Sugar Bear split are out. Yeah, Mama June from Here Comes Honey Boo Boo. Uh, Mama June and her her husband, Sugar Bear, are splitting up. It's kind of like Gwyneth Paltrow and Chris Martin splitting up. You know, minus the teeth. Go on. Sugar Bear says he did not cheat on Mama Joe. June. June. Mama June. June. Who cares? He says he didn't cheat on Mama June. Uh, he says, and uh, by the way, the whole day is just leading up to this punchline. After this, I got nothing. Sugar Bear said he didn't cheat on Mama June. He said it was done by his evil twin, Splenda Bear. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, God. Yeah, here Monday to Friday, 9 a.m. <laughs> uh, this will all play out in court. <laughs> Food court. <laughs> Splenda Bear is worth the price of admission today. But what else? Uh, did you see Gotham? No. It, was it any good? I didn't see it either. What, 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 what is, isn't it sort of like Smallville was for Superman? Like, Gotham is to Batman what Smallville was to Superman. Right? Yeah, yeah. It tells the story of how Bruce Wayne became Batman. And it premiered last night on Fox. It's like, yeah, it's like a prequel to the prequel. Yeah. Well, I, I would imagine it's going to be a huge hit since Batman isn't played by uh, Ben Affleck. So I'll give it a go. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> I know what story's coming up next, and this this is... Uh, yeah, go on. Well, a middle-aged woman snuck into Keanu Reeves' library. Yeah. Apparently he was, like, super calm about it. He heard something, went into his... And, and the, the thing about... Um, the thing about this story is uh, Keanu Reeves has a library? But um, a- anyways, apparently he just walked into his library after hearing something. There's a middle-aged woman sitting there in a chair. And he's like, hey, what you doing? And she was like, just sitting here, Keanu. And he was like, I'm going to make a quick phone call. And uh, yeah, but apparently he handled like a champ. Handled it like a champ. He was up. Uh, he was... Uh, 
he knew how to deal with an invasive intruder with alarming amounts of calm. But yes, uh,